Good morning, Eagle Nation. It is a non-football Friday for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, a bunch of other teams going to play, but not the Eagles nor the Chiefs. Uh, we're here to look ahead to a game that's still nine days away, and it's starting to get annoying, I'll be honest with you. But uh, we will shoulder through, and Johnny Mac will give us the yeah, insight. These bye team. weeks are top, Jody. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they're... they are uh, for fans, for guys like us who uh, have to try and come up with things to say and angles to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I'll give you one right off the bat, and we're going to talk plenty today about Jalen Hurts. Uh, <laughs> yours truly missed yesterday's show. I had a medical procedure done on my noggin. That's why I'm wearing the hat today. And I can tell you, new appreciation for Jalen Hurts. Playing hurt is no bargain. Uh, yours truly is in a little bit of pain this morning, despite taking uh, heavy medication last night. Didn't help me sleep much. Uh, so I know what it's like to play through pain. And yeah, I have uh, a, a deeper appreciation for Jalen Hurts. And John, that was the big story yesterday. The fact that Jalen Hurts did not throw at Eagles practice. There's no way you can spin this as good news. The question is, how bad news is it? What was your read? Um, I, I think, you know, it's about rest at this point. I mean, Nick, Nick Sirianni said earlier this week, and, and he proved uh, uh, to be truthful in this instance, he said, you know, we asked him, how are you going to handle the bye week? And when he was talking about practice, he mentioned, um, and Jason Kelsey said this yesterday as well, you don't know who you're playing, so you can't game plan. You you have some of the coaches doing some advanced work, some of the lower-level coaches on all four potential opponents. Obviously, they know the, the Cowboys and Giants well anyway, uh, two of those four potential opponents. But um, – you can't game plan. So, so what do you do? And, and he said, it's going to be more like an OTA, albeit with pads, maybe. And he did put the pads on. That was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, OTA environment, as far as, you know, technique and fundamentals and a lot of the young players getting extra attention, to be honest. Um, and, and a lot of the, the veteran players, not just Jalen, AJ Brown didn't, didn't practice at all. It's just maintenance. Lane Johnson was off to the side. A lot of maintenance uh, for the guys who are key players. Um, and Jalen obviously fits in that category. But there's no doubt. And, and we're going to have uh, Dr. Jessica Plin on the show today. And I'm, I'm, I, I really am excited about that because there's something going on here. And I don't, I don't know what's going on. You, you, you read all the documentation on this particular injury in the SC joint sprain, and you have grade one. You obviously didn't have a grade one because he wouldn't be hurting like hell, like Jody Mack. The, that was description of uh, Nick Sirianni uh, about the game against the week 18 game against the Giants. Hurt like hell. Um, so, we all kind of focus. It can't be grade three because he didn't have a, a, a separation or a subluxation or a dislocation. He didn't have that. So it had to be grade two and grade two, you know, two to three weeks, three to four weeks, maybe we're, we're past that. Um, well, we're right about uh, in that four week area, but, um, and he's still hurting like hell. Uh, you know, there's got to be some gray areas. I'm going to be interested to pick her brain about that. Um, but they're going to rest them. And, and remember, you know, people didn't believe this, but the original plan was to rest them until January 21st or January right. 22nd. They were hoping to get one of those wins and rest them, but they had to bring them back. They got what they needed to get done in an ugly fashion, no doubt about it, against the JB of the Giants. Was there a setback? I don't I don't I don't know. But I but you know he did throw a little bit. He didn't throw, you know, I saw some people say he didn't throw at all. He threw a little bit, but he's just lightly tossing. Like, you know, the first day of spring training, just a light toss. He she certainly wasn't airing out. The more concern to me though was Again, he wasn't in the ball security drills, which is weird because uh, he was out there. And again, this is not 
you know, when I say ball security, is that they don't let TJ Edwards haul off on you. They're they're just hitting you with pads and and boxing gloves and and they're not letting them go through that stuff. So, I, you know, there's angst in Philadelphia about Jalen Hurts' injury, and for the first time, I think it's it's there's right, you know, there should be some angst. Correct. It's it's a legitimate concern. You say he might have thrown the ball lightly. Here's what I don't understand about yesterday, John. Uh, and yeah, you and I don't have the x-rays or the MRIs so that uh, you would need to make a diagnosis. As you mentioned, we're going to have Dr. Jessica Flynn joining us coming up in about 15 minutes from now. And she too will not have the MRIs, but she can certainly speak to it better than we could. Uh, so we're playing a guessing game here, a quasi uh, informed guessing game. Don't you go one way or the other here? He played in the game last week. He threw the ball in the game that last week. Between you and I, I liked the way the ball left his hand. I thought he threw it pretty I, darn well. Yeah, if I didn't, if I didn't know issue. that he was hurt, I wouldn't have watched that game tape afterward and go, man, is he dealing with something? Because he didn't throw the ball well. He threw the ball fine. Maybe not the best he threw it all year, but he threw it fine. And then they bring him out and half-hearted go to a practice. He's dressed, he's padded up, but he's just throwing lightly on the sidelines. Don't you go one way or the other, say, all right, listen, he played. He played last week. He's going to play next week. We got to prep the way that we prep for a game, for an OTA, off week, and everything else. Jalen, go out and have a quote-unquote regular practice. Or Jalen, go stand next to A.J. Brown. He's got rest week. He's not playing at all. He's not dressing nor are you. We're going completely in protection mode. They went to this half-hearted middle yesterday, which I just didn't understand. What do you think the line of thinking was behind that? To stem panic, um, you know, in the city. I mean, there is a public relations aspect to this. Uh, you're probably right. They should have just, you know, had him off to the side like, like AJ. But, you know, he's the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, you know, he was the MVP candidate until this injury kind of uh, put him off to the side. There is there is a PR aspect of it. So you you throw him out there and he doesn't do little, but you can say he was at practice. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of, to be honest, uh, because he has, you know, he didn't do much. And I can't imagine he did much after we left the media. Um, you know, they're resting him. Um, so I, I do think it was more of a, 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 a PR thing than anything else. Um, and, and, you know, but now I'm, it, it, to me, I'm at the point where the only way the Eagles aren't in the NFC championship game is if Jalen Hurts is, is severely limited because I've, I've said it, the four potential opponents, they should beat and they should beat pretty easily at home with a, 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 a typical, a, a usual, a close to 100% Jalen Hurts. Not even concerned about it. Um, with a with the guy who was playing against the Giants, I'm concerned about it. Now, I can't imagine they would go into the playoffs with the same mentality that they had against the Giants as far as taking essentially the zone read out of the offense, the, the zone read mechanics out of the offense. I can't imagine they would do that. Um, I would imagine they'd let him play through the pain uh, and, and play at his normal sort of, you know, level of, of, of everything in the offense. So, you know, then the question becomes how effective – can you be in a limited fashion? So that's kind of where we are now. They got a long time, you know, and there's 12 other teams still alive that have to fight for their playoff lives this weekend. They can't even think about the Eagles at this point. So it's a luxury uh, to rest, but you know, Jason Kelsey was talking about it. He said, and he wasn't talking about Jalen specifically. He was talking in, in general about the bye week. People say, how important is rest? How important is rest in, in the bye week? And he said, to be honest with you, at this stage of the season, a week's not going to help you that much. You're all banged up. You're sore. You're going to stay sore. 
uh, he said the the advantage is the ability to sort of step back and, and get back to those technique and fundamentals because you can't do that in the regular season. I always go back to Jim Schwartz was the first one who told me, and it was, you know, and it's obvious, but it's, they don't do that crap during the season. I think mm-hmm. fans don't understand that, you know, and Jim said the off season is for teaching, the training camp is for evaluation. Now there's, teaching as well in the early stages of training camp but you know it's better if you just say (laughs) say it in one three training camps for evaluation and then the regular season you're just prepping for the next opponent that's it you're not worried about developing now nick does certain things and you know with younger players and you have a five minute period here it's not much jody it's not much You're just focused on the next opponent. So Kelsey said the biggest advantage is the ability to get back to that and sharpen your technique, which goes a little bit by the wayside and fundamentals. Um, But if you're banged up, you're banged up. A week's not going to help you that much. A little bit, not that much. Fair enough. And I think it differs with every single individual on how much they're coming back from. Uh, Good news yesterday was... Josh Wett back out of practice. If ever there's anybody you think is going to get a rest day, it's a guy coming back off an injury that had him carted off the field just two weeks ago. And that was not the case. He was back out there with his mates yesterday. Um, don't know how strenuous his uh, workout was and uh, what they actually asked him to do or put him through. But that's a pretty big uh, potential oh, upside yeah. for the Eagles. You know, it's funny. He's the guy you don't have to worry about. He's playing. So I think it was, you know, his thing was the optics, right? It's so scary when you see somebody uh, carted off the field, Uh, but he's fine. He's ready to go. He's going to play. Yeah. And he's had a great season. And and when you have Josh Sweat opposite Hassan Reddick on that pass rush, it becomes a, a terror at times for opposing teams. But yeah, when we talk about the, the, the level, I mean, Jalen, Lane, Aaron Seaposs even, he's going to try to make it back, which is a, a shock. Um, and he's he talked yesterday, and that was a surprise. And, and he's he avoided surgery, and he's going to try to punt in the playoffs. It might be this week, uh, not this week, uh, next week in the divisional round. It might be the championship game if they reach that far, but he's going to be back. Um, Josh Sweat, everybody concerned, rightfully so, because of what we saw, but he's fine. He's fine, and it, and you know the the thing with the Eagles, they were sure, pretty sure it was all precautionary, um, and and that's a good thing about the NFL now versus the way it used to be. They will be even with a player of that caliber, they will be safer. And if there's any any inkling of something that could be wrong, they want to err on the side of caution. It wasn't always that way, and that's what they did. Um, and, and they were even more cautious by keeping him out of week 18. They also felt, to be honest, that they didn't need him that much. Um, and he's going to be back. No question about it. That's a uh, good uh, re-addition from a production standpoint and also, I think, a mental standpoint. And yeah, you're right, Kelsey touched on this yesterday. Uh, how much are they really going to be able to accomplish with this extra week? You don't know who you're playing. There's only so much you could do. Oh, from a mental standpoint, you can get a refresh. And if you get a guy like a Josh Sweat back that everyone had these concerns as it being carted off just a couple of weeks ago, I, I think that's a major plus for the Eagles psyche. All right, JM, uh, before we get uh, Doc Flynn up here, I did want to ask you this. Whoever they play next week, it could be any one of a couple teams. And uh, before the show is over, I'm going to make you pick uh, the other playoff games and see who that's going to leave at the Eagles doorstep next week, if you're right. Um, don't know who it's going to be, but it's uh, it's a team that we think that the Eagles can handle and should be able to handle pretty easily. When that game kicks in, when it gets here, and we'll have a better read on Jalen's health. I think we can all agree that the play calling in the final game of the regular season against the Giants was altered from what we're used to seeing with Jalen Hurts as the quarterback, what we saw over the the majority of the regular season. How much pressure is on Shane Steichen 
for that first playoff game. We always talk about who's got the most pressure on. Well, of course, Jalen does because he's the quarterback. The head coach is always a candidate. We almost never go to the uh, offensive coordinator. Even if he's the play caller, he's usually down the list. But I think there's a huge amount of pressure on Shane Steichen because of the way the last game went. Because yesterday in practice, Jalen Hurts hardly threw. So we all have no idea how, how his shoulder is. Uh, we'll get a read a couple of plays into the game. Uh, quite uh, surprised that they decided to go eight straight passes and start the game the other day. But they didn't have any designated runs. How many? How much pressure is on Shane Steichen in the Eagles versus to be determined? Yeah, I think he yeah that he wants to perform well because he wants to be a head coach, and I think if I they do. perform uh, uh, poorly, that's going to hurt his uh, his his standing. Mm-hmm. You know how people are uh, around this league, and it's it's about um, you know making a splash and. So if they perform well, that's going to help them. If they perform poorly, uh, it's it's obviously going to be an issue. So from that standpoint, there's, you know, but there's always pressure. Nick Sirianni talks about that all the time. There's always pressure um, in the NFL. Um, their offense is, is pretty simple as a whole. And as long as you have that zone read mechanics, and, and it's not about Jalen throwing the ball. I say it all the time. It's a, a running the ball. Sorry. It's about the threat of, of running the ball and what it does to the opposing defense. So as long as that mechanism is back on the offense, you know, everything's going to be fine from a play calling standpoint. Then it becomes an effectiveness standpoint and how, how effective can Jalen Hurts be? So, yeah, I mean, the pressure's there because he wants to be a head coach and he's got three interviews and he better succeed or people are going to look in another direction. So, but, you know, it's about the players on game day. So, you know, how effective. He's not changing the offense. They're going to run their offense. And they did, have plenty did of playmakers. They, did they run their offense against the Giants last No, they didn't. They took the zone read mechanics out. I'm saying as long as that's what I said, as long as that's back in the equation, everything's fine. If that's not back in the equation, they got issues. Because things get muddy when you don't have that threat to the opposing defense. And that's what Wink Martindale, even with backup players, figured out pretty quickly in that game. Oh, Jalen's not going to run the football. And then things become much, much, much more difficult. They are easier to defend. All right. Uh, he's John McMahon. I'm Jody McDonald. You got Mac and Mac Bird 365. A big issue with the Philadelphia Eagles going into the postseason with their 14 and 3 record, and their bye is health. And we're going to get uh, sports position. Uh, Dr. Jessica Flynn up next to join us and hopefully give us some insight on what the Eagles are dealing with and how big a deterrent it could be some 10 days from now when the Eagles get back out there on the field for their first playoff matchup. Appreciate you streaming on in here on Birds 365.